Hey everyone, Shark here. Got an awesome one for you today. I know there's been a lot of Farage on my channel lately, and I'm not going to apologize for that because he plays in some epic games. So uh, this one was found by my buddy Alpenwell, who's co-casting this with me. You got Reekly playing as the Brits, ranked number one with the Brits, and you got Farage playing as the Wehrmacht, ranked number two overall. That's it. Let's watch these two go at it. All right, so we got Reekly here in red. Uh, on the south side of the map, Pacino Stalemate, getting two sappers out and building a section command post. Opposite him is Farage in blue, playing Vermont, getting his tier one out and the second pioneer. And then, as you heard in the intro, casting this one with me is my boy uh, Alpenwell. Uh, so yeah. I, I'm super pumped we were able to get the time difference to work, so thank you. Uh, yeah, no problems. I am uh, really appreciate you uh, to be here and uh, cast the game with you. I'm pretty excited about this one. Yeah, uh, apparently the, the comments for this replay on the uh, the codeDB.com, big shout out to those guys uh, for maintaining that website. I would not be able to do anything uh, without those replays. But yeah, apparently the comments were pretty pretty crazy. Uh, this game's going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know it's going to be a, a good game or a high tier game when you already look at the... Uh connection point uh, on the top right corner of the uh, map and Farage uh, is already starting to barbie barb wire the green cover from uh, Reekly's attack angle <laughs> and that, that's just <laughs> as Reekly is already uh, playing down uh, putting down sandbags uh, on the opposite connection point so yeah. you just know these guys they it's nuances. It's nuances. Yeah, they, they've come to play. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll do sandbags. I almost Grenadier never do barbed wire. Uh, and then this map, the changes that they made, wow, uh, sandbag and barbed wire, uh, yeah. the cutoffs uh, for the munitions and the fuel on this side of the map are can be game deciding. So uh, interesting that both players have prioritized it. From a build perspective, yeah. we're going to see more or less the same thing from both sides. Sorry to cut you off. Just two engineer units and two main lines for both players so far. Well, it's all right. You can cut me off any time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, two sappers, two sections, uh, or grandiers. A mirror matching right now. Uh, I'm not uh, very familiar with the um, build order for Wehrmacht right now, but I see when I play a lot of brick players, the next thing they build is going to be an MG. Um, yeah, but uh, that's just uh, what I've experienced. We shall see in a minute. Uh, I think you're right. You, lately, I've seen a lot of uh, high grenadier builds, although the really uh, the like the top ten, top twenty level players uh, typically don't overinvest. So I would be surprised if we saw more than three grenadiers here from Farage. Um, whereas the Brits. Uh, I feel like you see a lot of four and five infantry section builds just because they scale so yeah. well. Um, they don't bleed in the early game. Mm. Um, yeah. Also, uh, I think uh, converting those grenadiers later on to uh, Panzer grenadiers is a big option because they are very, very strong this patch. Yes. Yeah. It's really interesting. The map has settled out nicely with a pretty much even split down the middle. A little bit of uh, infantry combat here in the center. Um, I do like that they move these points uh, from fuel points to munitions here in the middle because it takes away that very kind of frustrating garrison machine gun play from early in the game. That's true, but it also uh, takes away like the uh, option to put uh, heavy early pressure on, which felt like uh, I can understand that it, they change it because it felt like sometimes overwhelming, um, <laughs> especially for lower tier players when they suddenly have to deal with a uh, fortified MG in a building uh, at their main fuel point. Yeah, garrisons just play differently in Co3 than they did in Co2, and I think that has changed. You know, it, like even Road to Tunis, which is based on Long Grace, like it just plays differently because of that central garrison. Yeah. If you look at the connection points, uh, Reekly has put down sandbags, then Ferry bobbed it, and then Reekly did uh, some sandbags again. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. And so, one thing I, I want to call out you called it exactly. Ferry, you got an MG42. Now he's doing his tier one officer's quarters. 
And most of the fighting now is over this cutoff here and yeah. these high fuel munitions points, which makes sense. Uh, infantry yeah. section gets away with a couple of models, but it looks like Fergie's going to take this over, and he's already teching to tier three. Meanwhile, Reekly has unlocked the heavy armor battle group. So he may be going for something like Crusaders. Nice. I like how Reekly stepped his guys back from the wall to prevent taking a lot of extra damage from the flamethrower. Yeah. And, and somehow, Reekly, uh, he's at least going to be able to stand on his cutoff while uh, Farage caps up this munitions point. Meanwhile, <laughs> Farage. Meanwhile, he all. Yeah, you're, you're going, yeah, go, go on, for go it. on. Go for it. No, no, you go on. Here. Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm impressed with the, the full map cutoff that Farage basically pulled off here. Yeah. Uh, despite the deep capping by Reekly. And we're going to uh, see a Humber now. Which honestly, Actually, it's not a cutoff, is it? Because it's still connected through the munitions point in the middle. It so it was, but when he had both of the strategic points, it was effectively oh, yeah. cut yeah. off. Yeah. Um, True. This Humber, if I ever play Farage again and I'm Brits, I'm getting a Humber because he loves to use snipers. So, uh, I think this is a good call from Reekly. Absolutely. Um, I usually dodge snipers because they, um, yeah. It, it costs a lot of micro, and um, yeah, they are such a big investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with the TTK changes, they're even more susceptible uh, yeah. to just getting run down. Ooh. Incendiary rounds onto the sappers. They get away without losing a model. Humber is kiting the Grens here in the center. A pack 40 coming out for Farage. Reekly is going for the, the med tent back at headquarters. Yeah, obviously he has to react to that Humber, and uh, since he has no uh, tier 2, uh, he can't build Jaegers or something like this, so he has to go for the pack 40, which Ooh. deals a lot of damage to oh, uh, yeah. Humber. Oh yeah. But also the Humber is uh, pretty fast and can obviously get away real good. Yeah. You, you just gotta be Johnny on the spot with that, because like you yeah. pointed out, a second shot and the thing's done. All right, so it looks like we're going to see a Stummel here. He's got a 2-5-1 coming out now for Fergie as well. Meanwhile, good mine from Reekly up on the west side of the map. Knocks out just a single Grenadier model as they're trying to recap. And then on the opposite side of the map, I'm seeing this a lot too. The Grenadiers supported with Pioneers. When the Pioneers had the Flamethrower um, to force you know, the Allied Infantry out of cover, the Grens do really well. So Infantry section they do. force off. Yeah. Yep. Also, um, the pioneers uh, from the German um, Wehrmacht are pretty um, cheap, so mm -hmm. uh, you can like invest in two or maybe three of them. I see also a lot of times three pioneer opening with flamers, mm -hmm. and yeah, they also even they are a weak unit and like they get their strength in numbers. Yeah, and can also be reinforced by the Grenz, right? Yeah, I've seen that a lot to this pairing and we see it here in the center as well grens and uh pioneers of the flamethrower it can be really dangerous because you basically force your opponent to choose between standing in cover and getting killed by the flamethrower or getting out of cover and getting killed by the grenadiers what i also like about these higher matchups is um that there is basically no rest on the map like you you, you can look everywhere and something is happening um at the very moment um when you cast or watch uh, games from lower tiers, there's sometimes this taking <laughs> like breath before, yeah, yeah. <laughs> taking breath before the uh, next storm, right? But there are no breaks here. These two uh, come for a fight, and um, yeah, yeah, these well, clashes are going on and on. You need to exploit any advantage you can. Uh, Reekly, Reekly has started to build a mortar a couple of times. Has gone away from it. He did his infantry training. He's gotten a six pounder out. Now he's teching grenades, which I think is to provide him some utility against the Stummel. Uh, the Stummel does, I feel like it does better against the US forces, but it still is great at bleeding infantry and supporting infantry pushes. And when you combine it with the pack 40, uh, it's a very balanced force is hard to deal with. Absolutely, because especially at that one, the Stummel can uh, like target enemy vehicles and slow them down for a little bit and the mm -hmm. pack can finish them off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Farage applying more pressure to the cutoff here as a Panzer Grenadier squad comes out. <laughs> yeah, this infantry section 
I think they're just going to end up slowly losing this engagement here. And uh, the Pioneers are continuing to capture this cutoff. So Farage going to again starve Reekly of some resources. Meanwhile, a little bit more deliberate push here through the center. These, yeah, Panzer Grenadiers are going to be a menace. What I really like about Rikli, uh, Farage right now is mm -hmm. that uh, although we see a lot of red on the map for the majority of the game, he mm -hmm. maintains a steady grip on those victory points, with, which are essential. Yeah, that's one thing he's very good at. He's known for being patient, but he is almost never behind on VPs. No. He, uh, all right, so he's checking the, the tier three officer's quarters here, which has a lot of benefits. Obviously, the Panzer Grenadier's vet one ability is incredible, but same with the pack 40. Um, and you already talked about the 251. So this is also something I'm seeing more and more is the investment in uh, veteran Oh, are we going to lose a section right here? Um, it looks Maybe. like they're just going to get away. Uh... Oh. Very lucky, very lucky for Reekly right there. Yeah, and Reekly almost lost a set of sappers. Oh, nice oh, pick up. Yeah, the sappers were standing on their mine uh, and lost two models there, but the Stummel reacts too slowly and the six pounder picks it up. A couple of mines here in the center. The Humber's lucky it doesn't run into one. Um, man, there is no answer on the field right now for these Panzer Grenadiers, and so I think if they continue to push on this munitions point and on the cutoff, Reekly is still going to be behind in terms of fuel. A Humber chips what, away a little bit. What Reekly has done though in the meantime, he has gotten the upgrade infantry training, which mm -hmm. uh, gives them 10% accuracy and reload speed, and they're also 10% harder to hit. So, yep. um, although there is no direct answer to these grenadiers, these infantry sections just fare a little better now. So, here's a question. Uh, is that is that bonus just a direct reflection of them getting veterancy one, or is that on top of their actual veterancy? No, no, that's on top of the actual veterancy. Um, although they uh, get obviously bonuses from getting going veterancy one, mm -hmm. um, the uh, they also get uh, 800 um, veterancy points as soon as you get the upgrade, right? Mm -hmm. So um, they will automatically uh, get to Vet 1, but it's not like the upgrade with the uh, Wehrmacht where you can uh, get the upgrade uh, from like the Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3 building and all units will be Vet 1 from there on now and gain more veterancy points or faster veterancy points. Mm -hmm. hey, that makes sense and it's a, it's a big deal. Crusader picks up a Grand Squad on retreat. I I suspected that Reekly was going to go to go for the Crusader here. He's got to worry about uh for one pack forty on the field, and there's actually about to be a second. But I think mentioning the yeah go ahead mentioning the Crusader, Reek, uh, Fergie has not picked a battle group right now, and he has unspent uh, six command points or five command points. Mm -hmm. He, al six. he also cancelled. He had a second Panzer Grenadier squad coming and he cancelled it. Which might be smart because they would be very susceptible to the Crusader. Oh yeah. He's also doing the... Uh, it looks like he's going to build a medical bunker in his headquarters. Uh, which I really like. Um, it's been a tightrope, you know, micro tip and trick for a while. But it's a much better versus the the standard base healing if you build the bunker and upgrade it with the medics you end up getting yeah. the significant manpower benefit in terms of the casualty clearing so i like that move as well oh here's the crusader and also the fuel is much needed exactly you can oh, use that fuel on veteran chasing, yeah. the pack 40 is on but it's just going to be blocked by a hedgerow and crusader might pick up another grand squad here using the veteran's ability oh man oh man Farage is just losing units left, right, and center. And he also lost the Pioneers. He and, did. Um, is not doing well on the top side, too. Well, so he's responded by locking in the uh, Luftwaffe battle group. And he's teching the support elements. So he'll have access to the Stug and the Naval Warfare. The Crusader takes a round from the Pack 40 and backs up. Wow, and now the KD very heavily 
uh, in Reekly's favor, which is probably those two Gren squads in the Pioneer squad yeah. indifference. Mine clearing me with grenades. Uh, I don't. Oh, but it didn't go up. He saw the um, mines with his sweeper mm -hmm. and threw a grenade right on top of them, but they didn't go up. And now, uh, trying to use the Humber to set him off. Well, the Humber's engine critted as well. Two pack 40s are closing, so they need to get out of there. Absolutely. Ooh, this Pan crew is facing utter annihilation. Yeah, Panzer Grenadier gets away with a single model. Uh, so Sapper's fair fairly well against him. Now, a Stug G coming out for Farrah G, which is an interesting choice, to be honest. And I, I, What do you think? What do you make of this? I think it's a rather a good choice because um, these uh, packs are quite vulnerable um, to getting surrounded by or swamped by Rikli's vehicles, right? Um, the only response he would have to that is the uh, Grandier with the Panzer Force, but he only has got one left. Mm -hmm. So he needs some sort of mobile anti-tank uh, and the Stuk is perfectly at this stage because both enemy um, armored vehicles are basically paper thin mm -hmm. and can penet get penetrated by the Stuk rather easily. Well, and, and with the changes to the armor, um, I think the six pounder is going to struggle a little bit to penetrate the Stug from the front. So it's relatively yeah. safe right now. And the Crusader is going to do nothing to the Stug. Rikli is getting uh, another um, pack gun or ATG in uh, return. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see the Crusader backing up immediately. Panzer Grenadier is in support of the Stug. Yeah, the Stug just shrugs off that shot from the six pounder. And a second Panzer Grenadier squad coming out, which makes a lot of sense, because they're going to scale much better against these infantry sections than the Grenadiers would. Reekly doing a little bit of mine sweeping on the opposite side of the map and capturing up. And if you look at the tech map, like, or at the mini map, you see, like, red units all over the map, and Reekly steady, slowly but steadily getting, uh, gaining control of the map right there. Mm -hmm. And Farage being forced into the center of the map. And, yeah. yeah. I, I think it makes sense, right? He's lost a couple of units. He doesn't have quite the same army composition, so he needs to focus his efforts and yes. maybe see if he can knock out the Humber or the Crusader and start to regain a little bit of resource advantage. Absolutely. Yeah, well, or at least, like, uh, fastening his front line, right? Mm -hmm. So shorten it and getting getting stronger again and then maybe coming back later on also what i mentioned earlier the steady grip on those vps mm -hmm. even though Reekly has been dominating farage so far the whole time he is um up in points mm -hmm. you see grenadiers and pens just putting pressure on these six pounders which is going to allow the stug to go after the crusader Oh, oh big the hit point on... blank last. Yeah. yeah. I always forget about that because I don't see the Shug very often and I assume, oh, it's an anti tank weapon. Tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same here, same here. Oh, now the Pegrins are going to start to suffer thanks to the Humber's marked target. I love that ability. Yeah. Uh, but Reekly doing a good job putting counter pressure in here through the center. Absolutely, and if you look again at the tactical map on the mini map, you will. S there is almost no blue left on the map. Like, Fergie is getting cornered right now. Mm -hmm. But but the only thing that's left in the red territory is the victory point in the middle, which I, if I would be playing the game as Reekly, would set a focus on right now, because the resources will not win you the game, uh, but the victory points will. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, as a third squad of Panzer Grenadiers hits the field, so the infantry balance swinging into Farage's favor. Reekly's got foot guards up, are coming out now. And those are going to be a decent counter to the Shug, I think, although the Bazookas have pretty low penetration, so it remains to be seen. Not only to the Stug, it's a valid uh, option for all units Reekly uh, Farage is on the field right now. They can um, deal heavy damage to infantry with the Thompson and also with the Bazookas against vehicles. Mm -hmm. Great use of the smoke by the Humber to allow the pi or Sappers to get up and 
disable that mine. Yeah, now like. Farragy's pushing out now on the west side. So he's trying to spread out his lines a little bit and recover some of the momentum. Absolutely, he has to get back um, some map control. Like, it's it's always so... It's, it's a very genuine idea to cover your retreating units with smoke. But what the difference is between us and those players is that they actually have the capabilities to do it, right? <laughs> in the heat of the battle. Yeah, so it looks like Reekly has uh, withdrawn his Crusader. He's he refitted it, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, MG42 gets knocked out, but it's in a position where Farage can easily recover it. And uh, I think those Pioneers are set out to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just going to come grab it. That's a new uh, squad of Pioneers as well. And look at this, like you were pointing out, Farage's... Yeah, he's losing the VP on the east side of the map, but he's capturing the west in the center. So he refuses to get behind on VPs. Absolutely. Regally's floating a ton of resources here. Because he has uh, the the map control the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. So he naturally has a lot of resources. What he's running short of is VP. I'm just, what, what do you think his, his plan is here? I think I'm, there's too much on the field for a Matilda to be effective, but maybe Grants? Um, well, if you take a look at the uh, counter for his uh, command points, mm -hmm. he is saving up for the, the Black, Black Prince. Prince. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So he has six command points. He could take the whole right tree and even get the recon artillery. But he refuses and could build Churchills, uh, like the free upgrade where you can build Churchills from your T3 building. Mm -hmm. But he is waiting for the 7 command point to get that Black Prince, in my opinion. Yeah, and well, with Matildas in their current state, I don't think there's any reason to go for the standard Churchill. Right, you still gotta build your tier 4, and it's barely better than a Matilda. Having access to the Black Prince is at least but, but sounds has, a lot more fun. He has built it already. He has built it already because of the foot guns, right? Mm -hmm. So the building is already in his um, in his base. And once you ask me why I don't go for the Tiger, mm -hmm. and I would give the same advice to Rikli, I'd rather have two Churchills than one Black Prince. Yeah. So he has he has the manpower, he has the fuel, he should get the upgrades and go for like uh, either the repair station or the radio net. I choose the radio net because he can boost his vehicles mm -hmm. and also the recon artillery, which would also hard counter um, the anti tank guns from Ferry. Yeah, yeah, he's he's just you can tell he's floating so much. He's very committed. To getting that black prince out he has the command points now so we will see now or soon if he is actually going for the black prince or if he just forgot to spend his resources <laughs> which can happen all in the heat of the battle also yeah while meanwhile um Ferrugy is losing a uh, pack gun yeah to uh, the two pack guns of Rikli, which is rather a big loss Oh, there we have it. There it is. It's coming. Prince the, has arrived. So the thing that I thought was interesting is Farage has not, as far as I can tell, he has not used any of his actual Luftwaffe abilities. So Reekly nope. doesn't know that Farage has gone to Luftwaffe battle group. Um, he's building not. his tier four right now. So he may, he may have also gone for the Black Prince because he's concerned about a tiger, right? If you haven't seen anything, there's no necessary indication of breakthrough battle group. But you w might not know if Farage played this way until the tiger shows up. If he would have gotten in the group, I, I would have suggested that, like, it's optional, but I would have suggested or, or thought that maybe uh, his grandiers would get the MP40 upgrade. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, he could be concerned about also Panthers uh, or something else. But. Then again, he has two ATGs, foot guards, and could get Churchills. So it's, uh, in my mind, it's not a mistake to get the Black Prince. But that's just my opinion, my personal preference. 
You know, foot guards forced off by Panzer Grenadiers and the Stug, but the Stug sees the Black Prince and thinks better of it. Immediately. <laughs> back Reverse <it> gear. <laughs> like, yeah, no we weren't made for this. <laughs> Hell no hearts without me. <laughs> A full retreat from Farragy on the west side of the map. Pack 40 backing up to the base to try to reset. Fortunately for Farragy, the Black Prince isn't really set up for base inspections. It just fires too slowly. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, he's getting cut off uh, again from his resources uh, in the north. Mm -hmm. So a Sticky Bomb comes in, but it's not really going to do a ton to the Shug. No, it's still uh, mobile and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, good to go. Yeah, at full health, you just need to do two in quick succession. Sappers and Humber working on right now, these pioneers. Now here comes Panzer Grenadiers, supported by two pack 40s to challenge the Black Prince here. Oh, 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 will the Humber go down? Maybe to the Stook? No, it's just too no. slow. And actually, two six pounders, so if the Stook doesn't react quickly enough, could take a couple of shots. But I guess neither player can see the other. No. There's also, one hit. the MG has to withdraw on the north side, and Fer uh, Fergie is losing control um, to his north VP. But then again, going down to the south VP to regain control again mm -hmm. to minimize his losses and victory points. So, Fergie going for a Brumbear and a Sniper. Uh, Interesting choice. Yep. Yep. Here's the Black Prince tangling with some pack 40s, supported by foot guards. Reekly getting a second foot guard out. He's got a ton of fuel. Black Prince getting hammered by two ATGs. Yeah. Stuk also going in to uh, support. So one of the pack 40s gets cleared. It's got immediately picked up by the pioneers. Brumbear and Sniper hit the field. Black Prince is going to move up again, sees the AT guns, and starts to back back through the smoke. <laughs> Rumbear takes a shot at the Black Prince, which does nothing, and gets a 17-pounder round for its trouble. Infantry section tangled with Panzer guns here in the center. Panzer Fair guns just lose the fight and have to withdraw. Yup. More grenades oh. coming in. Nice. And the south. Ah. Oh. You, you almost got the Humba, but uh, it wasn't enough. The ability to manage all, all of these engagements. Sick. Oh, yeah. So, MG42 knocked out by the Black Prince. And now, the Brit Infantry moving up here to tangle with the AT guns. Another Pack 40 going to be cleared. MG42 destroyed now. No more. Yeah. Yeah. But the Pack 40 will go, go down too. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Man, Reekly is just all over him here. Reekly is going is going for is playing to end this game. Yeah. He's and putting a lot of pressure, but Heft has to withdraw now here. He's not pushing it too hard. He want he wants to play it safe and uh, withdraw. Yeah, Pigren's on the retreat path, but don't do any real serious damage. They don't want to get pinched between the Humber and the Black Prince. That could also be <laughs> unlucky. Very unlucky. That could also, uh, that could have been a factor for Reekly to withdraw from this battle here, you know? Mm. Um, so, withdraw your units earlier so the uh, backstabbing unit uh, can't fi finish them off, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, he definitely saw that before I did, so good move on his part. Sapper's cleaning up the back Black Prince on the flank. Ereji somehow still ahead on VPs. Absolutely, it's uh, very amazing. Like, I, but I don't. Yeah, absolutely. I I don't get the role of the sniper right now. I I really. What was his thinking when he said, "Okay, I need a brumber and a and a sniper"? Maybe of the because of the ATGs. I don't know. Um, that's it's probably that and just the immediate damage it does in infantry engagements right you just cut that yeah. dps down immediately by one especially with the foot guards who since two of their weapons are always bazookas 
you you keep them from being a threat. Uh, Reekly, he gets the armored vehicle training. He's still floating a ton of fuel. Oh, but he is pop cap. So if I'm him, I'm just gonna spend all my fuel on veterancy upgrades. Well, let's see which veterancy upgrades he has gotten already. Like he got the tank one, the infantry one. Yeah. Uh, team weapon training, light vehicle training is, uh, yeah. So he he hasn't done team weapon yet. No, no, team weapon and light vehicle training hasn't been done yet. No. Okay. But it's also never. Um, uh, it's it's not always a good idea to spend all your resources. Sometimes a generous float can be um, crucial to re replace losses you have uh, endured during a battle, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, that kills me a lot of times. So I know maybe he wants to bank up a little something to have just right there to build new units. Yeah. Meanwhile, this uh, Brumbear, supported by Panzer Grenadiers, basically pushing right through the center here. Meanwhile, Panzer Grenadiers challenging these sappers over here on the side. The Black Prince is, I mean, it's very strong, but it's slow and he doesn't want to lose it. So I feel like uh, it's been limited in its role, especially if it gets pushed to the flank. Um, yeah. It's probably better as like an anchor point in the center. I don't know, maybe Grant should have been uh, a better option for Reekly. You know, we talked about this uh, on one of your previous casts. The advantage of having multiple mediums over... Oh, that infantry section nice is going to get away. Yeah. Pack 40 cleared again. Oh. Oh, the Brumba is so strong. Yeah. The AOE is strong with this one. <laughs> now his UP units get uh, flanked, Ooh, and I Pio's think this go fanny is going down. Plus yeah. a pack 40 destroyed by that Black Prince. Yeah, Farage built yet another and has a, a second coming out. Yeah, Brumbear doesn't want anything to do with this. I mean, you should not, like, uh, underestimate the also the moral effect of a Black Prince coming out, you know? When mm -hmm. I see the enemy with a super heavy tank coming out um, on the field, I always get the urge to react to it. We, you have to react to it, but what Ferruji did really, really good, he was not overreacting to it, right? Mm -hmm. If I would have played this game, I would have built maybe four ATGs, <laughs> you know, yeah. and overreacted. Maybe got the kill of the uh, Black Prince, but then you are left with four ATGs that you have no use for or limited use for. Yeah, and then you lose the infantry fight. Yes. Oh, good dodge of the Gammon Bomb. While, meanwhile, the sniper provides covering fire from the back mm -hmm. and capping the VP. Oh, Humber's oh. going for the sniper. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, does a ton of damage. Why is he not finishing off? Oh, Jesus. Because the AT gun there, but the Black Prince. Oh. An AT gun with the shot on the Humber. Panzer oh, Grenadier squad knocked Panzer. out. Unlucky. Yeah. Unlucky. And the, the Pack 40 is just... <laughs> they, one finally gets a shot off and the Black Prince just ignores it. Oh, man. Wow. At least the sniper got away. That was, uh... The Humber was very close to finishing that off. If you look at uh, Ferragy's command points, he has not spended anything on uh, the last... Um, on the last two, uh, like... Choices? Yeah. Skill choices or skills he can get, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's so... it's He thinks two steps ahead, right? He does want to have a choice when it depends, right? Mm -hmm. um, although he has we not the ammunition for neither of it, but the when the moment comes, comes and he has ammunition, he maybe wants to have the choice to get the um, like fragmentation bombing or mm -hmm. the loiter. Yeah, I feel like the loiter, if he waits until the absolute right moment to use it for the first time, can yeah. catch Reekly way off guard and maybe use it to finish the Black Prince or clean up an infantry engagement that might have gone a different way. We Absolutely. And we see a Crusader out. He's probably here to just help 
with a little bit of add a little mobility to the Black Prince. See, I don't get, I don't get why Reekly retreated his units from the top half of the map and his Umber is still there. While well, he could at least left the wounded section unit to cap the VP up there. Mm -hmm. And but to your point, Faraji hasn't been doing things like that, and so he is still in the lead on VPs. Oh, Gren Squad smoked by the Black Prince. That that three, the AOE is in the rotation rate. Oh my gosh. A absolutely. This thing is an absolute menace. And that's the it's advantage of... It's holding the town center all by itself. All by itself. It, him getting it out early, it's at vet 3 at the 35 minute mark. That is going to be a real problem for Faraji. Yes. Now, Faraji has Brumbe. been... Yeah, second Brumber because uh, he has, like... His infantry gets killed by the Black Prince, mm -hmm. and he needs to have something to deal with his infantry and the ATGs. And the Brumber is so like a very hardy, sturdy vehicle, which yeah. can deliver a big, big punch. Oh, Crusader takes a ton! Oh my gosh! And there annihilated. goes Crusader. In black Dukes and Pack Forties. Yep. Just the increased fire rate, the ambush camouflage. Well, the Brumber about to clear the six pounder. Black Prince moves back up, but it is not healed yet, and it's going to continue to eat rounds. Oh, this infantry section. Get away with just a little bit of health. Stug clears the six pounder and then is immediately annihilated by the Black Prince. Black Prince doing some heavy lifting here. Yeah, it's but still it's taking very so many health. hits. But guards. You need to be careful with the Black Prince, though. So. It's taking, there are two pegs firing at it. Yeah, the Gamma and Bombs. he's advancing in there like... Oh no. He's oh, gonna no. lose it. One more shot. Oh there no! There goes the Prince. The Prince has been slain. That's a major setback for Rigley. Rest in peace, buddy. Alright. Rest Black in peace. Pins down. <laughs> oh, Humber almost goes down to the Brumbear. The Pegrans the actually... Brumbear. Yeah. Oh. And they're gonna knock out that yeah. six pounder. Yeah, they knock it out, they kill it, while the other uh, pack 40s uh, in the town center have killed the uh, uncrewed uh, pack uh, or six pounder that was standing there. And uh, yeah, Reekly has uh, taken a heavy beating. He is left with no um, anti tank guns, no black prints, and for anti tank rolls, just having his sticky bombs or sticky grenades uh, with the um, foot guard section. Oh, yeah, and the Brumbears, they might be low on health, but they are more than a match for the infantry sections. Absolutely. And Reekly, he needs about another two minutes on cooldown, and then honestly another two minutes on manpower to get the Black Prince out. So you can imagine Faraji is going to get at least a VP advantage here and get the pressure back on. He's finally unlocked the Stuka Loiter, which I think is perfect, because if Reekly rushes out a Black Prince, he can corner it and then use that to turn that engagement. And so Faraji somehow has turned this around and is now no longer, has Reekly on the back foot after 40 minutes of being uh, pushed into his base. Absolutely, and if you look at the army supply, it has also shifted in Faraji's favor. 74 against 49. Oh, here, okay, here's the loiter. Here's the loiter, right in the, in the right moment. Otherwise, he would have lost that second Boomba. Yep, he would have lost the Boom Bear. Yes. So, Which is essential for his army composition right now. Because he has only two Grenadiers, which are uh, yeah, spread out. One is trying to cap the lower VP, and the other one is engaged in uh, combat activities uh, in the <laughs> middle of the map. Yeah. But, so the unfortunate thing, though, is there's only infantry within that circle, so the loiter is not going to it doesn't end up doing a ton of damage but it does keep the brum bears alive the brum bears alive and also the middle vp safe yes for the moment now we're going to see a panzer four from Faraji. and i know they didn't actually change these but i feel like their performance against infantry has improved or at least feels better really? lately yeah i i casted a match a couple of days ago and a couple of P4s were just running roughshod over allied infantry. 
Not quite as good as the Brumbear, but when you take into account the fact that they can hard counter vehicles, it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, also, I feel it's a good option to finally deal with that Humber that has been alive for too long. Speaking of which, the Humber's going exploring and will find the P4 immediately. The P4 unable to get a shot off. Humber gets a couple shots in on the sniper. Oof. Meanwhile, in the middle, there's a huge battle occurring. Yeah. Um, the foot guards are having a hard time against that Brumber, even with the two bazookas. The front is just too thick. Gamma bomb on the pack 30. Leaves it alive with three models, and Rikli has to withdraw again. Also, the second Brumba is uh, going into the middle VP, um, leaving the top VP a little bit exposed, mm -hmm. and Rikli is trying to get the ATG with his section squad up there. Oh, Bazooka in on the Humber. Uh, also, thank you for summarizing all of that for me. I'm, I'm glad you're watching the same thing I'm watching. Um... Yeah, Humber gets forced off by a Pioneer with a picked up Bazooka. Infantry section comes out of the woodwork to ambush this pack 40. Another squad of Panzer Grenadiers coming out for Farage. And now here it is, Black Prince number two on Black the field for Prince Reefer. number two. Yeah, wow. Imagine how many Grants or Churchills he would have got for that Black Prince. Yeah, uh, just in terms of manpower, it's at least four. Or not manpower, uh, fuel is at least four. The Black Prince uh, is Rikli pursuing the Brumbear. The pack 40. Rek uh, Rikli killing the pack 40 uh, on the top cutoff, uh, but Fergie has uh, now sent the Pioneer Squad to retake it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but I don't think the uh, Black Prince can get that uh, Brumbear. It's just too slow. Not, and not without overly exposing itself. And you see a pack 40, vet 3 pack 40 coming over. So that Black Prince doesn't want to overextend. This is the dilemma with these super heavies, right? Is you need them to make an impact, but if you extend them unsupported and they die, then it's even worse because of all the resources you could have put into other other units. Absolutely. Yeah, he could have, uh, like, like my, my the, the strategy I prefer is to get more mediums and also some sort of um, combined arms artillery or something like if, if you get a nebel or a, a call-in artillery just to actually swarm the enemy and break the line right there now the black prince is engaging the pack 40 and uh, the pack 40 is losing the fight against the black prince right there yeah. but another pack 40 in the background is shooting the black prince but doing no damage while the Rumbers doing dealing heavy damage to those uh, infantry units. Yeah. Now the the Brits clear one of the pack 40s. It's actually going to get knocked out here by the Black Prince, but Reekley's push to the middle largely uh, ineffective. He bleeds a ton to the Brumbear. Uh, and also he and bleeds VP. Yes. And he's ba back down. Now he's under 100 points. P4 looking to uh, flank the Black Prince, supported by the pack 40. Oh. That's uh, that that that's a <laughs> death trap. It, this tank was a death trap from the beginning on. I like the, the idea, Chelsea. but the pack forty shots bouncing and P four goes down. To so In my experience, you need at least three tanks, uh, three medium tanks to bring down a super heavy tank. Mm -hmm. All right, but it was a nice try. Yeah, Reekly has also been listening to you. He's got two of the VPs now. Fergie takes a cheeky shot at the section command post Close. with the Brumbear. Now here comes the Crusader. Yeah, yeah. Crus Crusader out now to support the uh, the Black Prince, which desperately needs repairs. Territory sector lost. This is a, like a top-notch match. Just to bring on the reminder that this is really a top-notch match. We've been going on for almost uh, 45 minutes, and yeah, the battle is still going on. And it's still there. It could go either way, easily. Yeah. Like, Farage is now has the upper hand. He has the initiative, for mm -hmm. sure. But, um, yeah, if Rikli gets uh, lucky with his tanks and his Black Prince, um, he can turn this around. Yeah. 
Run bear, uh, too late to support the Panzer Grenadiers against the foot guards, so they're forced to retreat. They're actually, they could go down here with this uh, Bren section. This Crusader is on a death mission. And P4 out. Gets. P Grens get knocked out. Crusader gets away. Bergy forced to back up here. Oh, this uh, infantry section here. There are dead men walking. They are dead men walking. At least the Shatter Wait. Will doesn't slow them on retreat anymore. Oh my yeah, goodness. But what do you have to consider here? Let take a look at this. Like the Brumber. Um, vanilla using its auto attack is extremely bad at chasing down units, right? Mm -hmm. But what these pro players do is they drive and do the attack ground ability to anticipate the shot where they will run through, right? Yeah. So, and that's also like, I would never have the APM to uh, pull this off. Uh, APM to pull this off. No. The first, uh, first shot from the Loiter targets the Black Prince, does a little bit of damage. Wow, this Black Prince is already Vet 3 as well? Holy cow. It has been taking out several uh, of uh, Farage's units, like a yeah. pack, uh, a, a Panzer IV. So. Yeah. But the uh, the double Brumbear is just too much for Reekly to deal with. And as he tries to exit his base, he's just bleeding like crazy. Fergie now about to get the triple cap on. Meanwhile, the Crusader has been in Fergie's base and is now uh, driving up north to uh, evade a possible uh, vengeance from uh, Fergie's tanks. Mm -hmm. The Panzer IV is looking. Brumbear is backed up into the center. Black Prince here to challenge on the west side of the map. Uh, these pioneers, I would sacrifice these pioneers to try to get a quick triple cap on. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> They, they've got promised the Iron Cross. <laughs> yeah. Guys, if you get this VP, even if the Black Prince comes. Oh, man. And only... they managed to get out alive. It's the it's the triple cap. 36 VPs left. Fergie so that has this a... game will be over in 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. It looks like the uh, final blow. Yeah, uh, Reekly just doesn't have any units to put on these VPs. If no. he goes to the center, he's going to get annihilated by the Brumbears. Black Prince is sitting. Yeah, Farage throws a GG Farage. right there. Reekly's going to stay in it, and I don't blame him. Yeah, well, but that's it. That's it. GG. That's the game. That's the game. Wow, what a comeback. Yeah. The comeback is real. Yeah. All right, just a really quick overview of the build order here from Farage. Obviously, I stop right around the time the uh, the first Black Prince gets knocked out. But so we got here two Pioneers, Infantry Company, the Tier 1, into three Grenadiers, and then an MG42. Nice balanced opening. He gets the Tier 1 Officer's Quarters. From there, he goes Tier 3 for the Panzer Grenadier Company. Gets a Pack 40 gets a 251 that he converts to a Stummel, gets his first squad of Panzer Grenadiers out. Then he gets that tier three veterancy as well, and then a second pack 40. That ends up being huge because most of his units for the rest of the game come from tier three. He texts the support elements, which allows him to build the, the Stug and the Naval Warfare. He gets a Stug, a Stug out, uh, chooses the Luftwaffe battle group. He doesn't really use any of its active abilities until the first loiter, but what he does do is immediately get the manpower reserves, which we're gonna talk about with Alpha here in a minute. Then he builds a medical bunker in his headquarters, at this point, he's in the end game. Gets two more squads of Panzer Grenadiers. He tries to hold three pretty much throughout the match. Uh, replaces Lost Pioneers. Gets his tier four out. Builds a sniper, two Brumbears, and then at the end of the game, he's dabbling with some Panzer fours, dealing with that uh, that Black Prince uh, battle group. Again, we kind of hit on it. Really, it's for the manpower reserves uh, and the Stuka loiter that he uses the Luftwaffe battle group. Great end game power and a lot of flexibility uh, on the rebound there. All right, and then for Reekly, two sappers, chooses the heavy armor battle group right away, doesn't get the sapper upgrade. Instead, he's eventually going to go for the initial vehicle veterancy, uh, gets his section command post out, three infantry sections, then techs into tier two uh, and gets a Humber from there. Then he does a lot of side teching, so field infirmary, inf infantry training, his first six pound AT gun, the grenade package. He gets a three inch mortar out. I honestly can't remember that mortar doing a whole lot during this game. Um, but the big piece here is then he unlocks the Crusader AA tank. 
He gets one of those on the field. That ends up being a big pickup for him in the mid game. He gets a second uh, six pounder out to help deal with some of uh, Farage's vehicles. Knocks out the Stummel, which works out really well for him. From here, he techs into tier four. He builds the foot guards, and then he floats a ton of resources waiting for the Black Prince to hit the field. Obviously gets it out, ends up building two uh, a second squad of foot guards. Um, a couple points, he gets a Crusader to back up his Black Prince, and at near the end of the game, he gets the armored vehicle training as well. Uh, for battle group, like I said, he really works the left side of the tree there, and then he comes back, he uh, selects uh, Radio Nep, doesn't really use it, and same thing with the Recon Artie. I think at this point, he's just too short uh, on munitions to really use it, but it could have been useful to him earlier in the match. Um, that's all for the build order stuff. Now on to the discussion. All right. So I'm back here with Alpenwell, uh, and uh, as we were talking off camera, we were talking a little bit about the kill balance between the two players. And so even though Reclay at one point had a pretty significant advantage in kills, Fergie eventually came back. Fergie was still down on overall kill count uh, by a pretty large margin to Reclay. And so you were kind of talking through, uh, off camera, you were talking me through that, but um, what's the significance of that? Uh, that you take away from that? So the only thing that made this possible, like to come back uh, in this significancy, um, even though I have lost so many troops, is just a 25% discount in reinforcing like the infantry reserve skill from the Luftwaffe company. Mm -hmm. um, also, the Panzer Grenadiers are such an um, expensive unit uh, not only in production, but also in maintaining. Mm -hmm. And um, he has now to just pay 21 manpower instead of 28, um, which, yeah, is a huge, huge uh, difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're, and they're cheaper than, at that point, they're cheaper than riflemen, right? Um, he's got the healing back in the base, and, and Vet 3 Panzer Grenadiers are notoriously durable. So if you don't drop the models, uh, and all you have to do is heal him up then it's just a time thing and then lastly with the the medic bunker as well so he's getting the casualty clearing so every now and then he gets a free model um, from having that medic bunker rather than having the the medical upgrade so a lot of different ways for Faraji to save manpower absolutely yeah he he got unlucky though uh, sometimes he uh, the black prince uh, took a <laughs> lucky punch uh, on the retreating units and he lost like two yeah. Two or three squads to that, but um, yeah, still, um, this manpower discount was uh, pretty significant um, or had a great deal in winning the game for Farage. Yeah, it's it's actually kind of a theme, um, and I, I'm noticing it like a lot of the the manpower discounting abilities have a mm -hmm. big impact in the game, right? So war machine Absolutely. or advanced logistics, low flop reserves. Uh, I think it's a it's also a good not necessarily a cautionary tale, but there's a there's an advantage to waiting to choose your battle group. And so mm -hmm. in this case, Farage waiting, he's like, what do I need to win this fight? And fighting with vanilla Wehrmacht for a while and then seeing like, okay, actually Luftwaffe is gonna help me because I get the manpower hack yeah. and I get the loiter late in the game. Um, yeah. And and in both cases, the, the loiter wasn't as overpowering as we've seen in other other games and other casts, but it's still, you know, in that one engagement kept that second brum bear alive, allowed him to hold onto the VP. Um, so good choices there, I think. Absolutely, and what I mentioned earlier is that uh, Reekly kept the option open for him, either going for the loiter or going for the um, uh, fragmentation bombing run. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't choose it until he was sure he wants to use it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I could have also imagined like a situation where uh, the two AT guns uh, and uh, some infantry would be channeled into the main road yeah. leading through the city, you In know, that center. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then and then he just sees the opportunity uh, and, and and instantly chooses. Okay, I need the fragmentation bomb now, and then. Uh, chooses a fragmentation bomb for that certain situation uh, to clear out the ATGs to give him um, back the initiative, right? Yeah. And that, that's just the nuances we talked about early, early on. Not only the barbed wire, not only um, 
yeah, being patient with picking your commander, but also being patient with uh, picking your skills that you might want to use uh, or which might become useful later in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the other thing uh, I'll tell you, casting this game felt like a 2v2. Like there was so much going on yeah. on the map at all times. And I was doing my best to bounce around and capture it all. Um, and this this came up in a, a couple of discussions the last few casts. I'm at the point, like you can tell when people are using the tack map and when they're not, just by how mm. quickly they react across the entire map. And so you could just see that in this game. There was very, to like to your point earlier, there's almost never a time when there wasn't something going on. Even when Reekly was waiting the three minutes to get his second black Black Prince out. There were still pushes. There was still aggression constantly. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. I, I think Reekly did a fantastic job uh, pushing Faragy, um into in front of his base, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there were certain times where the whole... Uh, where Faragy where just hold the north fraction uh, of, his, um, of his resources and the rest of the map was just red. And mm -hmm. uh, you would still see Rigley advancing from multiple angles and re really pushing Faraji to the limit there. Mm -hmm. But uh, then again, uh, he endured, he dug in, and um, yeah, he la lasted <laughs> and came back. That's, um, yeah. Yeah. Remarkable. Remarkable. I've never seen a 47 minute long 1v1. No, I haven't. I haven't either. I think part of it was because for so long the center VP was uncaptured, so there was no drain yeah. on the other side. I I do want to call out. We talked about it a lot, so I won't hit it too much. So when I'm playing, right, and I see somebody grabs a VP in like the first ten seconds of the game, I immediately yeah. think, "Wow, what a noob!" Like, <laughs> fuel, yeah. fuel is so much more important, right? Like that there, there yeah. are different things you want to cap on the map. But we talked about it so many times. Faragy manipulated the entire character of the game by maintaining the VP pressure. So even when Reekly was winning tactically, he was behind on VPs. And if you think about like, yeah, the game is a, supposed to be like a fun simulation of World War II combat and all that other stuff. What is it really? It's a contest to make the other guy's VP ticker go to zero. So Absolutely. It, my, uh, the one thing I'm taking away from this is like, I got to stop ignoring VPs because normally the way I play, I'm like, oh, I'm playing. I'm doing OK. And like, oh, I have 50 VPs left. All right. Time to crash. And, and at that point, it's too late. So yeah. um, there's an advantage to that. Uh, yeah, true. It, it's also like when when I'm in the ladder playing ladder games uh, and, you know, uh, the higher you go up in the ladder, the more often you you will see familiar faces. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, there are some players that I know to be greedy. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I when I see their names as my opponent, I I immediately know. All right, they are greedy. They are playing slow, right? Mm -hmm. uh, go for a triple VP cap early on, just to bring down the VP counter um, really really fast to lure them out of their de of their defensive playstyle, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that 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 just mind games that happen like uh, at a, in a, in a much um yeah bigger way uh when, when you have these really really i think they are even top 10 or top five players right mm -hmm. so um yeah i i'm really really glad we got the opportunity to um watch this replay yeah me too i got one more question for you and it's all if, right if you're weekly what do you what do you do differently to close this one out is it is it well, grants is it get a bishop to deal with the pack 40s like, if you could do one thing, uh, one thing, I I have to say I I have to go for two things. I not not go for two things, but I would go do two things differently. Okay. Like one at one mo moment in one at one point of the game, you said um, Weekly is floating so much resources. Mm -hmm. He he is because he laid an emphasis on capturing resources. Um. One point in the game, I also said, "Wow, look! Look at all the left side of the map. Look at all the map. It's so red. The only thing blue is the VP in the mid." And yeah. that's what that's what I would have uh, done different. As soon as I have my fuel floating, and and I already have my T4 building right or T3 building, 
uh, I I know I have enough resources to uh, get on with my build, right? Mm -hmm. So I need to, and and I see my opponent is far ahead, far up ahead, and VPs. I need to make a push for those VPs. Mm -hmm. That's the first point. Secondly, I would not go for the Black Prince. Like um, a a a good friend of me, Mule, he has said this. Uh, like uh, the the last time you interviewed me about the match <laughs> I played, yeah. he he, I I I, I uh, said that what what he said. I said it too. He said, "Don't go for the tiger. If the tiger, how many units of that type or that type would you get for a tiger or in that case a black prince, right?" Mm -hmm. So and it's the same situation here. The Black Prince is super uh, armored. It has a super main gun, no doubt. It delivers quite a heavy punch. We have seen it. It kills units. But um, when it comes to like overwhelming your opponent, um, build three grants of yeah three grants and then um, save some munitions for the recon artillery and yeah. rain the recon artillery down on the HEG positions. Mm -hmm. So your opponent actually has to move them. Mm -hmm. He has either the option of firing at your grants uh, and get hit by the artillery or move them and your grants can uh, go uh, in, right? Yeah. And that's how you overwhelm your opponent. And this is how Rigley could have ended the game um, too. And that's just, well, obviously it would have been not as easy as I said because Sergi is a very <laughs> capable opponent and uh, also countering your actions but um, yeah. that that's what I would have done yeah and I'm just imagining like the recon artillery right on the exit of Sergi's base and the pack 40 is just getting annihilated and then the grant swarm in and yeah and then then the game's over um, recon artillery grant swarm in and he also could have activated radio net which mm -hmm. gets him 25% rate of fire plus 25% more accuracy. Uh, so these tanks that steamroll in become more deadly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easy peasy, right? Game's over. Yeah, <laughs> Rigley, <laughs> take notes <laughs> next time. Uh, you can say that. I can't say that. Um, <laughs> Alpha, well, thank you for coming on, man. This is so much fun. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, it's and been then, an honor. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, we'll have to do this again. And for everyone else, that's all we got. Thank you very much. And we'll catch you in the next one.